Welcome to another of the Davis Instruments technical support videos. Today we're going to be covering replacing the harness assembly in a Vantage View station. The Vantage View station uses what we call a unified construction. That is, all the sensors, the battery holder, the solar panel are all hardwired to a central transmitter. That transmitter is put into a plastic box that's filled with epoxy resin. This means that it's very robust against the elements, but if any one of those elements fails, you have to replace the whole harness assembly. It's not that difficult. It only takes a couple screwdrivers, no cutting, no soldering, no welding. Not for everybody, but most people can approach it, and this video will help you decide if it's something you're going to want to try. A warning about safety. This is not something to try while you're on the roof. Take the station down and work in a safe place. It's not worth your life to take a risk. This also only applies to stations of the M series or later. If you look at the serial number or manufacturing code, it should begin with an M or P. The label with that code is on the underside of the station, but if your system was purchased as a set with a console, you can look on the back of the console. It will have the same manufacturing code. The tools you'll need are just two Phillips screwdrivers, regular size, and a small size. Typically these are called P1 and P0, but some manufacturers use different nomenclature. First step is to take the white cover off. To do that, there are four screws on the underside. Two by the wind vane, two across from the solar radiation shield. By the way, you don't have to take the vane or the wind cups off, but you can if it's easier. Now that we have the cover off, you can see the harness assembly in its fullest. First step, squeeze top and bottom of the cover for the temp humidity module and it just comes right out with these little hooks. To take the cover off the battery holder, you're going to need to use your regular size screwdriver to take these screws off. or a little bit more. Sometimes the circuit board will come with the cover, sometimes it will stay in these two slots here. Either way is good, just free it from the cover and put that aside. Next is the solar panel. It has two hooks on it. Lift the hooks and gently bring the top edge of the solar panel forward. Don't try to remove it from the rest of the assembly yet. The wires are a little bit too short for that. Just leave it loose. Now then, using the smaller screwdriver, take off the two screws on either side of the transmitter box. Beneath the transmitter box, you have the cover for the wind position sensor. You don't need to lift that off, but it may want to. Just hold it down with your thumb. Now you'll notice there are two cables. They have these little hooks that are easily undone. Just pull the wire to the opening in each case, and they will free up. This one holds two, one on top of the other. It doesn't matter too much which one's on top. Just pull them out. And there's the harness assembly. Now, there may be some slight variations between models. This has round cables, sometimes they're flat cables, but notice that they are permanently mounted in each location. And as I mentioned earlier, here's your plastic box filled with epoxy resin. If you are doing this as a repair surface with Davis Instruments, you're going to be packing this up and sending it back to us. For our purposes, We'll just reinstall this one here since it's a perfectly good harness. It is, quite literally, doing the reverse order. Gently placing everything back, piece by piece. I usually like to do the transmitter box as it holds everything in place. Yep, 
screws need to be firm but not overly tightened. This is going into plastic. The gaskets will take care of sealing against uh, any kind of rain. For the solar panel, put the bottom edge back into these two hooks here and gently keeping the wires free. One wire on either side of the central post. Lean it back until it snaps into place. There you go. The battery holder has two grooves it fits in. Note that the battery holder is to my left, probably the view, you, the viewer's right. And these metal plates slide into these slots here. It should go down with just about no pressure. This is the gasket used for the temp hum sensor. It fits over the stem and just gets pushed into the hole. This has no particular slots or anything to hold it in place. The cover will take care of that. Now the wires. On top of each other for the first side by side, and it doesn't matter which one. Oops, the one. There we go. The two side posts. And if your fingers can't get in there, you can just gently push it in with a screwdriver. Okay, everything's in place, now just putting the covers on. We'll do the temperature sensor first. Notice there's a slot on one side to allow for the cable. Put it over. Fit this, the hooks into either side of, the, of this outer box. They go outside the box into the slots that are visible top and bottom. And lastly, the battery holder. The, the large, the, this rise portion here goes right over the circuit board. So this is wrong, this is right. And just wiggle it on and put the screws back. So as I finish this up, a couple last notes. Our stations use an ID code so that the various consoles and receivers can tell them apart. Your new transmitter has not been set to any particular ID code other than the factory default of ID1. If that's what your old station was set to, you don't need to do anything else. If it was set to anything 2 through 8, you are going to need to use the white button on the underside to program it. And this is covered in your owner's manual. The only other step is to put the cover back on top, put the four large screws in from the bottom as we did before, and you're done.